welcome everyone. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place. We welcome you, Holy Spirit.
to say that I love 
like you all to be seated. Mellow it down a little. The word of God tells us that we are to be still and to know that He is God. It's in the stillness of the heart, the calmness of the mind and the emotion that we hear God for every word and every syllable. And I heard the Sovereign Lord say to me, Son of man, what do you see? And I say, Lord, show me what you want me to see. And he says, tell my watchman from far and from near, tell my watchman to live up their hearts in praises to live up the shouts of praises for behold far in the horizon comes one riding like a king and tell my people that I have set apart this time and this season of your life to become a season of consecration that will reveal my manifestation. And he said, Watchman, what do you see? And I say, Tell me, Lord, the deep things of the Spirit, the oracles of the Lord. And I see women, I see children, I see men from all walks of life, from every corner of every nation, a people set apart, a people that stands entwined with heaven, entwined with one another, nations to nations ministries to ministries where they have been set apart with blind folds removed from their eyes and I heard the Lord says I am removing the blind folds of religious city Maraha Carlos Takakazakemis I am removing the blind fold of religious city because religion has blinded a multitude and even those within my church says the Lord and so therefore this is the time where I am giving you eyes to see ears to hear and hearts to understand the things that I have purpose from the ancient of time I have set this time this season for you and my purpose will be revealed through my church, my people. And my people shall be called the people of the King. And I will give my people a scepter. And they will reign. And they will rule. And they will usher in my kingdom and ministration on earth. Just as I have purposed it in heaven, says the living God. I see people all across the planet, people entwined with one another, arms in arms, united, united in the diversity of the spirit. <laughs> I see a replica, an emulation of what heaven would be like 
And I see that being manifested on earth in the days ahead. And the Lord says, and now I am moving my people into an era of glory. Oh yes, you have experienced my goodness, says the Lord. You have experienced my grace. And now you shall experience my greatness. And that greatness will usher you in. It will draw you into a greater hunger for the glory. And it's not just only the glory of the Lord, but it's the glory that is in the sons of man being revealed according to what my word says in Romans 8, 19 to 21. That this is a time where all creation is awaiting for the revealings of the sons of God. Have I not said unto you, my people, that Christ in you is the hope of glory? And that glory shall be emulated, that glory, that glory shall be demonstrated in this time and in this season. And I'm speaking to you what I'm seeing in the Spirit even now. And the Lord is saying that my people are to empty their baskets because I'm going to refill the baskets with the fruits of my Spirit in this time. Many times when your baskets are filled up with many other things, the groceries of the world, God cannot replenish it unless you relinquish This is a season, says the Lord, that the harvest is ripe. And not just only the harvesting of souls for salvation, but the harvesting of fruits for ministries. The harvesting of fruits. Because you are in a season, prophetically, it's a season of the harvesting of the pomegranates. It's the harvesting of the figs. It's the harvesting of the vineyard. And you shall see that harvesting in this season, says the Lord. The harvestings of grain and grapes, of figs and pomegranates. And my people shall hold a sickle and a scepter, and you need both. A sickle and a scepter. The scepter to decree the kingship of Christ, and the sickle to reap the fruits of the kingdom territory. As God is expanding His kingdom, like never before and you and I Maharahalash I just heard the Lord say this to you people of God He says you are living in a time where the prophets wrote about You are living in a time where every sin in the Bible talks about You are living in such a time. And one of the anointing of the prophetic is to understand the timeline of God, the Saka anointing, to understand what is here for now, for this present time, and what awaits us a hate. And the Lord just say that, tell my people. You are living in such a time that has been written long ago by the prophets. You are living in a time where it is said in the latter days the glory shall be greater. Mahaya Takularasukumanahinte. 
You are living in a time where the Lord says the latter day glory shall be greater than the former. Father, I pray this for your people. That they would understand that there's so much that you want to just give to them in their baskets, but they need to first empty the groceries of the world, the priorities of the flesh. That they will be able to receive from you all that you have planned for them, Lord. Not missing out even one single goodness of your purpose for them. Lord, I pray this for your church and even for those who are viewing us live from the nations tonight. That we would understand the time that we are living in. And coming to that timeline, it is not by coincidence because nothing in the kingdom happened by chance. There's no such thing as coincidence to a child of God because the Bible said it clearly. He directs the steps of the righteous. Even you being here tonight is directed by the Lord. And it's by no coincidence that for the past few days, there has been a Bible reading marathon of the Word of God being read, proclaimed from Genesis to Revelation, all 66 books of it. Am I right? It has been proclaimed and released into the atmosphere. And they may not understand why is it that the Spirit of God would choose such a time in this season for that Bible reading marathon. Because on this day, if you will go back to the biblical history, when the exiles returned with Israel, and Israel the priest took out the scrolls, and as they start to rebuild again the temple, and at the completion of that, Israel took out the scroll and it was called Rav Yom Teruah, which is the Hebrew for the eve of the Feast of Trumpets. And tonight is Rav Yom Teruah, the eve of the Feast of Trumpets. And you say, but pastor, that is, a, that is a Jewish holiday. People of God, even before Israel was formed, God already ordained the feast. Genesis 1.14, He put the stars as a mo'at, a feast, sign, a timeline. And everything in the Bible that is significant happened on the feast day. And so we are in a very significant time in God's calendar. Rav Yom Teruah. On this day, the people of the land, the holy land, they will blow the shofar a hundred times. All throughout the next day. And they would read the word, they would proclaim the word because they believe the word will prepare the way. The word will usher in an open heaven because God always honor the word. You must have both the word and the spirit to be complete. And so therefore, I'm going to ask Brother Thomas to come with the shofar as tonight is the eve. It's not the actual day, but it's the eve. And I want Brother Thomas to come and just release that. I'm going to hold the mic for you. Turn the mic on. Release that, my brother.
That clap offering is for the Lord, not for the trumpet. Many may not know this, but in Exodus chapter 19, when Moses brought the children of Israel back to that place where God encountered him, Sinai, and at the foot of the mountain, they blew the shofar, and they blew the turkia, and then it ended with a shivering. And in that, we saw the presence of God came the only time where the Father left the throne. And He brought His throne along with Him and set it at the peak of Sinai. That sound ushered in the glory of God. And I believe that when we release the sound just now, and we're going to do it again tomorrow, we are ushering and I can just sense that thick, solemn holiness of His presence. Can you feel that? It's such a solemnness of the holiness of God. And tomorrow is the feast. And tomorrow we are going to start at 5 p.m. And at 6 is going to be a transition. It's going to be a transition into a very significant time. And people of God, just as Israel proclaimed the word, he gathered the entire nation, young and old, women and children, and even nursing infants came. Why? Because there is a corporate blessing that God releases to those who assemble themselves and come into his presence to receive that. You cannot receive that online. Hallelujah. I mean, we, we know that there are many watching us from the other nations and other places of Malaysia, and, but I'm sorry to say that that is the truth, and I speak the truth. That is the angelic battalion. And so, I want to encourage you not to miss out on the goodies of heaven. Because the Father is about to pour out not only a new wine, a new anointing, and a new fire, but He's going to pour out a new commission, a new commission for the church in this time. He's going to pour out new Provision. And when I talk about provision, it's not always in dollar signs. Provision comes in many different forms. And so people of God, don't miss this very significant time. They've been releasing all the 66 books just like Israel did on the eve of Yom Teruah. And now we believe that as the Word of God is being released, we believe, like what I mentioned yesterday, remember the word Rakab. In the beginning, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters. He was hovering, Rakab, incubating the Word, waiting for the Word to be spoken. And immediately when God says, let there be light, that Word becomes a reality. That Word was manifested and light shines. The same applies to us in this time, throughout this conference, because there is a hovering presence of the Holy Spirit. This is His conference. It's not all about Jesus. It's not about Dato Chua. It's not about me. It's not about any Dato Dato and Nene Nene. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And when Jesus is glorified, when Jesus is exalted, when he's lifted up high, he draws all men to him. And in that, he receives all the glory. And before I pass the mic to Dato Chua, 
I heard the Lord say to me just now when I was there, and the Lord says that there is going to be a liberation tonight, an anointing to liberate people from three things. Number one, he says, those who have addiction will be set free. The second one the Lord said is that those, hear these people of God, those who have been battling with what I call the spirit, Spirit of double-mindedness. You can never make up your mind. You are always wavering between two opinions. Elijah came and said, how long are you going to waver between two opinions? And God is going to set you free from that because the devil knows that God the judge honor his word and his word says in James 1 verse 6 that if you are double-minded, you will receive nothing. And so... God wants to liberate you, set you free from double-mindedness, the spirit of procrastination. And the third thing the Lord says is, I'm going to set people free from their unbelief. Because when you experience Him, you will believe. And one of the, again, one of the weapons of the enemy is to bring unbelief to the body of Christ. And when there is, remember what the gospel says, that when there was unbelief, even Jesus couldn't do much in his hometown of Nazareth because of unbelief. And that's why that is a hindrance that God wants to remove from the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Because when you believe, all things are possible. Are you all still alive? When you believe, all things are possible. And all things become permissible in the presence of God because where the Spirit of the Lord is, He is here to liberate. There is liberty. He is here to liberate us. When God liberates you, it's because He wants you to walk into your destiny. He wants you to step into your promises. And that is about to happen tonight. And tomorrow. And it, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop after this weekend. What you are receiving, that's why I want to encourage you here, what you are receiving is a seat that you are going to carry because what you are receiving in the holy fertile ground will germinate the soil of your heart. And that seed is going to take root. And once it takes root, you're going to see the blossoming of the leaves and the fruits because He wants to fill your baskets. Hallelujah, Lord. And some of you who are still waiting for God's promises, this is the time to grab it. He wants to fill your basket. And there may be some who are already waiting for the casket Yet God says, it's not time to expire yet. He will fill your baskets. I pray you get that. He wants, to, he wants to refire you again. Hallelujah. Because we are in a time where we are seeing the merging of three generations. And I want you to hear this. God is a God of three generations living together at the same time. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, grandfather, father, grandchildren. Three generations. And He is the same God today. And they, we are seeing three generations merging together where the mantle of Elijah is now bringing the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. The merging of the generation becoming the generation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that. So are you ready? To welcome the man of God. You know, before, before the, the team came, I told people that Dr. Chua Chu Ming was a former leader, the health minister of Malaysia, and God promoted him. Now he becomes the health minister of heaven. 
Hallelujah. He didn't retire. He got a new promotion. Hallelujah. Because there is no such thing as retirement. Are you hearing me? Those of you who are serving the Lord, there is no such thing as retirement in the ministry. Hallelujah. Praise God. We just take on a different hat and put on a different shoe. Hallelujah. And so, I've heard a lot about Dr. Chua Chu Ming's testimony of his conversion and how he encountered Jesus. Hallelujah. And I believe he has plenty to unload to you. Hallelujah tonight. So without much further ado, let us just give them an Asia Revival Center warm welcome. Come, my brother. No time limit. It's harvest time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tonight is the eve of the feast of trumpets. But tonight, it's not the night for inner healing or for deliverance. Not on the eve, but it is on the actual day tomorrow that I will minister. I will minister. Hallelujah. Tomorrow is the time. I set you all free from generational spirits and curses, familial spirits, from all kinds of spirits that have come into your body, Christian and non-Christian. Tonight is a prelude to that. Tonight is for the glory of our Father. Hallelujah. Rick Warren says, as a pastor, he can preach. And people will see him as a vendor, as a seller of an idea, and they may reject it. But when a man testifies to the glory of God, no man can say no. Is not true. Because the man who testifies or the woman who testifies to the glory of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are the purchasers. They are the consumers who have tasted of the goodness of God and is proclaimed it to the world. Revelation says that we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the testimony of His saints. So tonight, I'm doing my part for that. Tomorrow, we will go into the, the not the actual, to the fruition of what my brother, Pastor Terence, have said. You know, speaking after Terence Poe is the most difficult thing to do. They say that you should never kiss a girl who's leaning away from you. And you should never climb a wall that is inclining towards you. Never, I won't say never, try your best not to speak after this anointed man, Pastor Terence Poe. I've changed. I was going to talk about the kingdom of God. But I say, this guy is an expert. I've never seen a man when he preaches. <laughs> the doubters will say, is there a lizard there? 
but with vacant eyes and with great eloquence he looks up hallelujah he's talking to god god is downloading the message i know this because my son damien chua reverend damien chua today when he speaks the holy spirit loads downloads the message for him amen for for 40 years after i became a christian in secondary school and then when i went to work and then later on to work and study in london for my law degree for 40 years i walked away from the lord i did not remember him you know why the church of my tradition when I was young never spoke of the Holy Spirit. They never spoke about the power of the living God. They never spoke about supernatural miracles, signs and wonders because they believed it ceased 300 years after Christ. Christ, does he short sell his people through his word? He never short sells him. 300 years for the creator of the earth and the universe to the creator of you and me, the creator of the homo sapiens. You limit him to 300 years of his power. When he is from eternity to eternity, that is balderdash. His power is here today. And all through the time, from the 300 years after the death of Jesus, right through the years, to the, to the Middle Ages, to the Dark Ages, the Holy Spirit remained. Pastors do not speak about it. Bishops do not speak about it. The Pope does not speak about it. But the power is there. And the power continued in the monasteries where the monks and the nuns were. They believed that they served the supernatural God the almighty, omnipotent, omnipresent, and everywhere present. The story I want to tell you is a story about the revival of one family in Kuala Lumpur. My family. Revival comes to us. We are a team of about 19 people came from Revival Fire Movement all the way to be blessed by you, your church, by the owners of the hotel, the, the Urban Hitch Hotel. Thank you so much, both of you. We are refreshed by both your generosity and by the penetrating power of your word that is downloaded to you from heaven. Thank you so much. This revival ended 40 years of unbelief seeking after the pleasures of the world, ambition, wanting to go higher and yet higher, to seek for earthly and materialistic gain. Who can stop that? Who can stop it? you will hear the story of the him who can stop that. 2,000 years ago, 
when the Lord Jesus Christ came to the earth, He was God, come down to earth to the Virgin Mary, born of the Virgin, overshadowed by the Holy Spirit over Mary, conceived, conceived a fetus in her womb. There was no man's blood in the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. No man's blood. He was the Holy Father in heaven. Through the Holy Spirit who overshadowed Mary and she conceived. And he came for one purpose. And he preached one message. The principal message is the kingdom of God. He did not come to preach of the kingdom of a denomination. He came to save a family for himself. By commanding his disciples before he ascended to heaven. His resurrection from the dead witnessed by 500 people. The resurrected Christ in bodily form still. But that body could walk through walls. That is the wonder of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what he did for my family. And this is my testimony to the glory of the Lord. In the fifth chapter of Mark, he tells of a man who was so demonized that the demons had driven him insane. And how the Lord Jesus Christ came for that one man, leaving the multitudes behind, everyone that hungered for healing from the Lord were healed, even, even if they just touched the hem of his rope. They are healed. Never has mankind ever seen that kind of power to heal, to deliver. Demons would flee out of him, out of the body of the man who was demonized when they see Jesus. And one of them said, What do I have to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Demons recognized the deityship of Jesus. They knew that he was God. Men may disbelieve. They may pursue religion, as Darren said. I was in the ministry of the government. For 15 years, I was a member of the administration. The members of the administration is the government. For 15 years, I was there. And I've served my part for the nation. And I want to tell you one thing. What I learned when I was in school, even in that church that did not believe in the Holy Spirit, the values remained in my heart. Even though I walked away from church, I walked away from God for 40 years, but the values were ingrained into my character. And that's the way I conducted myself through government. Always people-centered, people first. We are the servants, and we literally got my whole ministry of health Act like servants to serve the public. Doors always open. Have you ever tried to speak to a minister or a deputy minister or a top civil servant? It's almost impossible. 
The doors are closed. I say, open your doors. I will open my doors to set the example. You all open your doors. Chief Secretary, you open the door. Director General, you open your door. So the industry and people, patients and their families who have a problem can come to you and you, can, you must help them to overcome it. People first. For Jesus is always people first. Care for the people and win them for Christ. You know, there was a time when I was in London. I was five years in London because I could not get into University of Malaya to study law. And that's what I wanted to be, a lawyer. No money. I had to go to London to work. I work as a waiter. I work as a factory laborer. I worked so many jobs within those five years. Now, in the year 2003, I came back to Jesus in the full gospel assembly, Kuala Lumpur. Came back to Jesus, but still double mindedness. Terence, many people are double minded. Still, the thought of serving God is still far behind. In the year 2000, something happened. In the year 1999, I'm going back in time now, 1999. I felt tired. I felt drained. So I said to myself, I better go to the National Heart Institute for a check. Doctor. Dr. Rubaya, the chief cardiologist of the IGN, she gave me a thorough check, scanning, treadmill test, so on and so forth. At the end of it, she said to me, Congratulations, Minister. All your arteries are clear. Did I say thank you, Jesus? No. I said, thank you, Dr. Rubaya. One year later, I was visiting my hospitals in Sabah. And towards the evening, I felt so exhausted. I felt unwell. I sat down. And the doctors came running. Are you okay? Are you okay? I said, fine, fine. And we flew back that night to Kuala Lumpur. The next day, I went to IJN again. To Dr. Robaya. She checked me thoroughly. But this time, more tests than the first time. And as I was sitting in front of her with all the results before her, she said to me, What happened? What happened? I said, I don't know. You are the doctor, not me. She said, four of your arteries are badly blocked, especially the artery, the iota, at the juncture to the heart. That is very severely blocked. I said, are you sure not? One year ago, you say everything was good, doctor. One year later, it's impossible. It is impossible for one man in 1999 to have thoroughly clear arteries and one year later, the same doctor tells you four arteries are severely blocked. It's impossible. I don't have to be a doctor to to come to that conclusion. I've never heard of such a thing before. It takes many years. Many years of your favorite pork lard 
your GL cha and uh, to, to 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 get your tails blocked, right? Bakute, don't touch that. That is sacrosanct. <laughs> I said, okay, doctor. Can I go home now? I want to collect my pajamas from the house. She said, why? I, I, she said, I said, I don't like the hospital pajamas. I prefer my own pajamas. And she said, Dato, you supply the pajamas to this hospital. <laughs> then, she said to me, the operation has to be done immediately. He pushed me into the operating theater. And I had the best surgeon in the, in the country. The best cardiothoracic surgeon. Tansri Yaya, Dr. Yaya. Tansri Dr. Yaya operated on Mahathir. Then he operated Abdullah Badawi. I was the third member of the cabinet that he operated on in the year 2000. At that juncture of time, most of my children had become Christian. Almost all except one, the eldest, Julian. The other four sons all had become Christians. And with their wives, all were Christians. My wife, was also a Christian. You know how my wife became a Christian? My sons who became a Christian before her would try to persuade her to become a Christian. They were witnessing for Christ to my, my wife. And know what my wife, who is a Buddhist, would say? Son, all religions are good. How many times have you said that mantra before? All religions are good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Until that same year, 2000, we were in Melbourne to visit my youngest son who was studying at the University of Melbourne. And he said to us on one Sunday, Mom and Dad, come with me to the, my, my church. Myself, a hardened backslider. My wife, a confused Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, uh, I was hesitating, but he said, Dad, if you come with me, I'll buy you dim sum. Clean study. <laughs> hey, your youngest son is going to treat you to a dim sum meal, man. Who can resist that? So, we went to church. There was a Chinese lady who was preaching in that church. I told my son, I'm going to sit at the far end against the wall. I don't want to be too close to the altar and the pulpit. No, 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 no. Keep your distance. Keep safe. After the preacher ended the preaching, she did this. Uh, I was looking around, who is she calling? And then I looked to my back, there was a wall. <laughs> come, come. Can't be possible. I'm in a foreign country, and this China woman is preaching, and she's asking me. And she never gave up. Kept on doing this. trying to lure me to the front when I wanted to be far away from the pulpit. <laughs> she sent the church pastor 
Pastor Jean wants you to go up. Jean, I never, I didn't know who she was. My, my wife recognized her, saw her in some, some publication or something. Can, can we pray? Can I pray for you? She asked me and my wife. I said, okay, la, it's free after all. <laughs> you know, pastors sometimes are suckers. You know? They pray, 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 free. Yeah, never mind. She laid hands on me. And she prayed, and she prayed, and she prayed. <laughs> I stood there like the OCBC bank, solid as a rock. <laughs> Hallelujah. I refused to fall. She then must have been in disgust, walked away, <laughs> laid hands on my wife and prayed. And to my shock, my wife, boom, onto the back. I said, oh my, what happened? <laughs> She's sick or something. <laughs> sick with hunger, waiting for the dim sum. <laughs> fell on the floor and she laid on the floor for 20 minutes. My son came and sat by her head on the floor. Then Jean went and prayed for other people. 20 minutes later, she got up, saw my son beside her. She says, son, did you speak to me? No, mom. Did that Pastor Jean speak to me? No, mom. Anybody spoke to my ears? No, mom. She kept quiet. Then when she came back to Kuala Lumpur, I saw a change in her. She got hold of a thick Bible. Why can't she start with a with a new NIV, you know, pocket size. <laughs> she got a big volume. And that Bible was read since that time, two, in the year 2000, up to today. She'll be reading through the Bible. She'll be looking at the newspaper news, and then she'll lay her hands on the paper and pray on the news. Later, she revealed to me that while she was lying on the floor, she heard a voice speak to her, a man's voice, but very gentle. And she, he was saying to her, let it go, let it go. You thought that was Walt Disney, didn't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. You thought it was Walt Disney, no? It was the Lord Jesus Christ who spoke to her. Hallelujah. Change her, transform her, just by a word from the Lord himself to her, knowing the things in her heart and saying, let it go. Can your choir sing it now? <laughs> Life transformation. Let it go. Three words change one life. Five words brought down the Berlin Wall. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, operating theater. You know, a bypass surgery. When I was minister, I went to Oxford to a heart center, and I actually saw a professor of English being operated on at the opening of his heart. Not that. You, when you open up your rib cage and clamp it down to expose the heart, they still the heart, they still your heartbeat. Your heart does not beat. Your heart beats through a machine now. You breathe through a machine. Everything is run by the machine. 
And when they open you up, you look exactly like a rack of pork in pork ribs in the market. Exactly. I look at it and I say, that looks familiar. <laughs> and that's where the bakute came in, right? <laughs> After the operation, they pushed me, sewed up with wires already. Eh? The sternum has been sawed, torn open, and then patched back together with steel wires. Pushed me back into a private room on the ground floor where the operating theater was. And I was still unconscious. I was still under anesthesia. And then, I don't know how long it was until... A nurse came in, I was told, I knew nothing about it. Came in, took one look at me. Alama, puchat la muka. You know what puchat is, isn't it? It's the color of this curtain. <laughs> puchat. She called the team down. Dr. Yaya took one look at me and says, Push him back again into the theater. Open me up again. On the same day. It was not the eve of the Feast of Trumpets. Open me up again. And I, I didn't know what happened. But I knew what has happened to me? Within one year, four arteries became blocked. Went in for operation. On the same day, undergoing two major heart operations. It was, it was desperate. It was desperate. My family upstairs, they knew that this was a crisis. Life and death. They were praying and they were praying and they were praying. Save my father. Save our father. Save my husband. Praying and praying. Pressing into the Lord. Save Chua Jui Ming. I tell you the gravity of it just a few days ago in Klang. We had dinner time. One of my old friends who is also a old friend of Tan Sri Yaya told me Tan Sri Yaya was so worried your face was so drained of blood and he was worried that the minister of health would die under the scalpel that day and it could have happened what saved me it was that family upstairs pressing into Jesus. Save dreaming. Save him. That pulled me through. That is why I'm here today. <clears throat> then in the year 2004, 2003, end of 2003, after I accepted Jesus, Two persons came to my house from FGA. One of them was Abraham Tong. He was then chairman, president of the FGB Malaysia. Anointed man of God, a man of great miracles. He would pray over his patients. He would pray for the patient that is in the hospital and the person in the hospital gets healed. From his office, he prays and he gets healed. He came to my house together with a Singaporean former gangster, murderer of a very notorious gang, killed people and threw them into large vats of acid so the evidence is dissolved away. His name was Tan Tong Chiang. <laughs> Serious? That was his name. 
มิสเตอร์ตันตองชังฮาลิลูยาเข้ามาที่บ้านฉันสองคนกับอับราฮัมตองอับราฮัมตองตันตองชังไอ้ซีบันี่ something to witness something like the day of the feast of trumpets ใช่ไหม And then what he he took one look at the tapestry on my dining wall, full wall, almost full wall tapestry of nine prancing dragons made by hand of gold and silver thread. I bought it in the early 1990s for the sum of 40,000 ringgit. They look at those dragons, nine cow on ya, prancing with five claws, imperial dragons on my wall. My wife hated it, but I loved it. <laughs> I would throw spotlight on their eyes, and they have stones in their eyes that would glitter at night. Oh, I love strange and exotic things. <laughs> you know what this Tu Tong Chang did? He said that must go. I say what? What? What did he say? <laughs> that must go. What do you mean? It must be destroyed. I say forty thousand ringgit tong tong chang, forty thousand ringgit and he want me to destroy it. Sim tiao. Then he said to me, "I bargain. I begin to bargain. Can I give it away to somebody?" No. <laughs> Can I give it to some temple? No. <laughs> you know what they did? They took out knives. Shh, shh, shh. Every slash of that forty thousand ringgit was a slash on my heart. <laughs> Have you ever been through that experience? They went through my house, opened every drawer, demanded me to show them my wallet. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, I hope these guys do not take some money from me. <laughs> Everything they look through. Wow. They found so many amulets, charms. You know why, as a minister, I go to temples. I officiate functions and temples that until the Chinese thought I was a Buddhist and Taoist. I had to tell them, no, I'm a Christian. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Great testimony. Yeah? <laughs> you see? They took everything. My daughter-in-law had to bring carload after carload of all these things to the FGA church because they have a furnace there and burn all these things. On the way, on the way to the church, the four locks on the car began to go up, up, down by itself, up, down, up, down. Do you think she was scared? Yes, she was scared. But she carried out her duties. The demonic world is real, my friend. Very, very real. As real as God is real. So my house was cleansed. But still, Throughout that period, I began to suffer oppression. Oppression of the neck, of the, my back. People would see me on television and say, why does he look so haggard? 
Why does he look so tired? And the devil oppresses you. You don't look like Terence. <laughs> no, no. You look down. So that was the situation I was in. Oppression. I suffered from insomnia. I suffered from gout. My stomach had bacteria in the linings of my stomach. It's called H. pylori. They can't get rid of it. They can't get rid of the H. pylori. It made me burp so loudly that I became very embarrassed. Can you imagine the people around and you suddenly... It's so embarrassing, you know. Then I pretend it's not me, <laughs> somebody else. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was involved in so many things. Indonesian Pakia would give me amulet to protect me. I would. I went to Myanmar and visited ET. And she looks exactly like E.T. <laughs> she could read what the bank, the, the American $100 bank note in my wallet. She read out the numbers exactly and asked me to take it out. Same numbers. So, E.T. Ubatian. He's called the treasure of Myanmar. He says he found a stick one day, and that stick can heal people. And one of the senior ministers had heard about him. So when I went on a mission, he requested that I bring him back to Kuala Lumpur. Me? Bring him back? And I actually did bring him back. And his wife was sitting there in, the, in her lounge. You use a stick, and she go, ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> All she got was pain. <laughs> she was not healed. It wasn't Terence or Pastor Samuel Tan or Frank praying for them or Tommy or you all gotta come up afterwards and pray for people, huh? All of you, you think it's a free meal, huh? free meal, huh? free hotel. Huh? Come and pray. <laughs> Sebastian, where is our Sebastian? Huh? He ran away. Uh? Tomorrow, make him do double duty. <laughs> okay. I did transcendental meditation. I have to seek peace. You know what? The last thing I received was peace. I did Qigong. This is very demonic. I can tell you now, after Qigong, you know what happened? When the wind, your stomach and your body begins to whirl, you begin to, your hands begin to, like that. You cannot control, it becomes like that. At the end of it, you are so tight, palm, you just lie on the floor. It's supposed to give me health. It's supposed to give me peace. And I get so tired lying on the floor. All these things were open doors. Open doors of the occultic into my life. The year 2004 dawned. My son, fourth son, Damien, and his wife, Mei Ying, were in Fuman, in Guangdong province, an area that is now very prosperous woman, industrial area. They were there. But the wife, Mei Ying, suffered from hyperthyroidism for a number of years now. And you know when you suffer from hyperthyroidism, hyper you suffer from depression. You suffer from hair loss. 
memory loss, anger arises quickly. Oh, you know, huh? Have you ever suffered from that before? You. Okay. I think uh, Samuel Tan can handle that. <laughs> yes. Terrible. And she would quarrel with Damien until he was so desperate, broken hearted. He went to the balcony one night after a big quarrel. And in the balcony, he called out to Jesus. Why are our lives so dry? What's the difference of the life of a Christian compared to a non-Christian? Why have you not healed my wife, Mei Ying? Pum, pum, pum. Did Jesus appear suddenly? No. But did Jesus hear Damien? Yes. Yes. Just before the Chinese New Year of 2000, uh, 2004, they came back because they were tired of working there in Human. And they wanted to come back for a holiday. So they came and stayed in my house. During that time, he had a dream. And in the dream, he was walking down the dark road. And he saw a group of people surrounding a man sitting in the center. And he came and approached them. And as he approached them, one of them said, Damien, come, come, pray for this man. And as he laid his hand upon that man, that man jumped up. Ah! Would you be frightened? He was frightened. And then he woke up. Then he came to that fateful day in February. I was doing my, it was a, it was a Monday, Monday night, coming to the midnight ready. Tuesday is the day of the federal cabinet. I sat on the floor of my bedroom. My wife was lying on the bed reading. And I was uh, sitting down there. I don't know what happened. Damien came home. He saw my head reading the file which was still raised up on my hands. and Myself looking at the file. Then he came and stood beside me. And he waited and he waited. And he said to himself, my father doesn't even know I'm here. He shook me by the shoulders. And as he shook me by the shoulders, I looked up. And to his horror, my face was evil. And I called out in the Malay language, which is actually Arabic in origin, Zalim! Zalim! Cruel! Cruel! Then he said to my wife, I believe dad has got a stroke. I should have sent him for medicine, you know. Dad has got a stroke. He called his brother Darren to come down. He called his wife Mei Ying to come down to my room. They hoisted me and put me on the bed. And the moment they put me on the bed, I became violent. Violent. And then ensued a few hours of the manifestation of the evil, unclean ones. They would say to my family, sometimes I could hear them speaking. Sometimes I'm drifting off because I had taken two sleeping pills. I was drifting off between sleep and wakefulness. My family 
who were there witnessed the whole thing. And I, but I remember what they said, some parts of what they said, because this went on for a few hours. He would say, they would begin to mock. They begin to hiss like a snake, mocking the, my, my family, sneering at them, making fun of them, threatening them, boastful, at times pleading like a little child. He threatened my sons. You watch out, one night I will come for you. And I will dig out your eyes. And I will cut your throat. And then he would say, my son would say, get out, get out in Jesus' name. And they would mock them by saying, echoing back, get out, get out. In Jesus' name, get out, <coughs> mocking them. <coughs> Turn to Damien. I hate your faith. Damien was the most faithful in the family. <coughs> I hate your faith. And then another time they will plead. Please don't drive us out of this house. We like it in here. It is warm inside. It is cold outside. And I've learned that's true. Unclean spirits hate to be disembodied from the human being that they were tormenting because they go out into the dry places, as Jesus said, seeking rest and finding none. <clears throat> And Damien said, In the name of Jesus, who are you? False by the name of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. The chief of the demons inside me replied, My name is Legion. For we are many. The message, that's in the Bible. May bring the Bible down. I brought the Bible down. Sure enough. This was the madman of the gatherings. Driven insane by the demons. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? Chapter 5. What is your name? And the chief of the demons, demons replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. 2,000 years ago, they were in this body of the madmen. Then they pleaded with Jesus, who was going to cast them out. He said, can we go into the pigs? There are 2,000 pigs. Jesus says, go. And they went into the 2,000 pigs. A legion is 6,000 soldiers in the Roman legion. 6,000. And the 6,000 went into 2,000 pigs. And the pigs became mad and ran off the cliff and drowned in the sea. Fortunately, I was not driven mad. If God had not intervened, one day I would have been driven mad. If I'm still the minister of hell, they would say, Xiao Nang Lai Liao. Ah, my friends. Then Damien said to me, Pa, we're going to take you to church. Because they've been calling. They've been calling. But that was in the early hours of the morning. Most people were asleep. Except they found one pastor. That was the pastor that prayed for me in Melbourne where I stood. Like the OCBC bank. <laughs> yes. Her name, Jean Lim. 
She came over. And she looked at me and she says, take him to church at Mantin, glory place. Then Damien came to me. We're going to take you to church. Straight away, Legion replied, I can't go. At nine o'clock in the morning, I have to be at the cabinet. Do you think I went to the cabinet by myself? I went to cabinet with a legion within me. What do you think about all the other ministers in the cabinet? <laughs> there may be well over a million demons in the cabinet. <laughs> and that's true. You laugh. But people in churches are bringing demons with them into the church. And they hear everything the pastor say. You understand? That is the powerful ministry of deliverance. Which we will do tomorrow. Hallelujah. <laughs> I look at the clock. 5 a.m. Started at midnight. It was 5 a.m. I cannot go. At 9 o'clock, I have to be at Putrajaya for the cabinet meeting. I took the blanket covered, not me. They took the blanket, made me take the blanket, cover my head, and I fell straight away asleep. That's the reality of the world of darkness. He almost killed me, my friends. The devil comes to kill to steal and to destroy, says the Lord. But I come to give you life, and life more abundantly. Today, I live a life more abundantly. <clears throat> they took me to church three, two, two nights later, because I refused to go at first. Oh, how would they say? Sekaya. Peggy. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> they tempted me with steak. Dad, we're going to take you to a steakhouse. I love steak. What is it? What guy? <laughs> huh? No, no. Are you? Are you? No. <laughs> okay, never mind. Never mind. But it was a ruse, a trick. And they took me towards Mantin, where Jin Lim's glory place was. <laughs> but let me tell you, the demons within me thwarted them again and again. To go to Mantin, you've got to turn left at a certain road and then go in to Mantin. But they kept going on. And then they realize they have passed the entrance and they've gone to onwards towards Saramban. Then they will turn back and go back again. Again, they will miss and go out again. I think it was only the third attempt they managed to get to, into the side road that goes to Mantin. When I, go, when I got there, let me explain to you what happened. They were praying for me. For two hours, nothing happened. I was sitting on the, on the floor they were all standing around or sitting around. They were singing hymns. Then they were commanding the demons to go. Nothing happened. Two hours later, I felt my body move up. Slow motion. And the man in Melbourne who was solid as a rock fell to his back. Fell on my back. And then began the deliverance. I want to tell you about the deliverance. That you may know that the world of Satan is real. The world of hell is real. As the demons come out, there were many. As they come out one by one, compelled by the name of Jesus, 
I can feel my stomach muscles churning like the waves of the sea. For a few hours, you try that. Your stomach muscles rolling. You can't do it, but they can do it. <laughs> rolling. And they come out through the mouth. I can feel them squirming in my head. My back here, and back of the neck. My back mostly in the solar plexus area. The tang tian, this area, lower stomach. And as they come out, wailing and shrieking so loudly, my brother in Johor Bahru called my sister who had come all the way because they heard the condition I was in. And he, but to take the phone, my sister went out into the compound, quite a distance because it's a big house, took them out to the compound. My brother said, what is that? What is that sound? And she explained to him, you know, my wife told the first person was my sister, Hong Chu. And when she heard it, she began to weep. She began to weep. She was then, together with my brother, running Pulai Springs Golf and Country Club in Johor Bahru. What they did was, still crying, she went to my brother's room, Jui Ling. And Jui Ling said, why? What's happened? And she said, I can't tell you. My honey, my wife, told me, don't tell Jui Ling. He has a big mouth. <laughs> but don't tell him. Sure enough, the news went out. The big mouth went to operation. But he was very caring, caring brother. What was that sound? I will tell you. Uh, they came out. Many of them came out. But it took three months for me to be set free. During the course of the three months, my sons Darren and Damien, who was in the room witnessing the manifestation, they got the gifts of deliverance. Maying got the gift of vision and the gift of prophecy. She's very accurate. One month before the last general election, she told me, Dad, God spoke to me. There will be a change of government in Putrajaya. The kind of accuracy, the kind of anointing, and I got some of it myself. The next day, they took me to another prayer house. My son, Julian Chua, the elder son who was backslidden with his wife Tasha, staunch Buddhist, was sitting in front of me as they were praying for me. And when they were, I was cast, they, were, they were casting out the demons in me, they saw two figures, white in color, whoosh, out of my mouth. The consequence of seeing that with their own eyes, God revealed to them that these are entities, these are beings that has been sent by Satan to torment men. The outshot of that, Julian came back to the Lord. And his wife received the Lord Jesus Christ. After she herself went through massive deliverance, at the Grace Assembly. Deliverance. Powerful deliverance by the pipers. Have you heard the pipers? So my friends, it took a long time. 
three months. I want to tell you, one day we all in Pulai Springs together with Pastor Jean Lim, my family members, as they were praying for me. In my mind, I was not Chua Jui Meng. In my mind, I was a serpent. And I got down on all fours because I could not stand the name of Jesus. I slid it on the floor. And then I found my hiding place. They said I ended up under a big chair, which I thought was a hole for me to hide. Mind warping deception. That is the work of the devil. But at last, I was set free. Do you know when I was set free? You know that verse X 38, is it? Huh? 10 38. How Jesus of Nazareth, anointed with the Holy Spirit, went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. There's a very close connection between open doors and demonization. A very close connection but the torments that they give to you through illnesses, sicknesses, they sicken you. They make you ill. You know, I've prayed for people. Not me, but I was used. Few occasions, one was a woman dying in Bukit uh, Paritiram in Johor Bahru. Paratiram, a town, small town. He, that woman, I don't know what cancer she was suffering from, but as I approached to pray for her, she was, the smell of death was all around her body. Have you ever smelled the smell of death? I smelled the smell strong smell, aroma of death around her. I asked her, I prayed for her, then I asked her, would you like to get up? She can't get up. Last stage, death was coming for her. Held her hand. Raised her up. She stood. I say, you walk with me. I put my hand under her armpit, another hand, holding her hand, and then going, going. Then she turned to me and said, I want to walk by myself. And I said, hallelujah. She began to walk by herself. A dying woman walking by herself. Then I went to pray for other people. This was Jean Lim's ministry. Jean Lim's ministry in Rutiram. I went to help. After the prayers were all over, I turned to some of the people in the hall. And I said, what happened to that woman that we prayed for? Oh, she has gone up for supper. <laughs> Hallelujah. She has gone up for supper. Amazing things. I pray for a lot of women. Sorry. People. <laughs> our brother, Tommy, our brother Sebastian, has he still disappeared? Where is he? Oh, hallelujah. Sebastian, I know Samuel, Pastor Samuel Tan, Pastor Frank, Frankie, Frank, Ling, Anglican priest, the priestly anointing and the kingly anointing. Also you, also you, tomorrow night 
they're going to minister to you. Tonight, there's a punishment. You disappear. <laughs> They're going to minister to you. We have been ministering through the COVID period. People will come to the Revival Fire Movement's headquarters in Puchong. Or we will go to their houses as a team. Or they will come to my house. I prayed for one woman suffering from colitis. A young woman, pretty girl, unmarried. You know what is colitis? She has large ulcers in the small intestine. Large ulcers. Can you imagine how painful it is? Food must pass through. Even your excrement will pass through. Suffer. I just did the deliverance for her and I prayed for the healing of the colitis. And for six months, I hear, I hear nothing from her. And one day I called the mother who introduced her to, to me. I says, what happened to your daughter? There's been no report from you. Oh, she's here. She's come back from Indonesia. You took to her. So I talked to her and says, how are you? She says, the ulcers had gone. No surgery required, no fees payable. Sorry, doctors in the private hospital. Sorry for that. Thousand apologies. Thousand <laughs> apologies. But this is the kind of work we do in the Revival Fire Movement. Our brother is now going to be a very precious member of Revival Fire. And the sister. Grace, Pastor Grace and Pastor Paul Young. They're going to be important members. Frankie, the wife, William, the sisters. We have almost 300 members now. 300 members now. Majority are pastors, 60% at least. And the rest, Christian activists, Christian witnesses, people who are anointed for healing and deliverance. Because our job is to expand the kingdom of God. Amen. I don't care about the kingdom of men or the kingdom of denominations. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. His wish, his will is contained in the Great Commission. And his will is that you go. When I say go, I don't mean you go to another church. Go to the harvest field and be witnesses for Christ. Amen? That's what we do. Friends, I've seen Parkinson's disease very, very, uh, very sad state. Parkinson's disease. Once the demons were driven out of this man, today he's almost fully recovered. It's not me who is doing it, it's not Tommy, not Sebastian. Not Frank Ling, not Pastor Samuel Tan, not him. We are just available. You see, God wants to take the pains and the hurts out of your life, my friend. He wants to build a family, a family that will one day reign on this earth. You know that? You, as Terence said, we are all kings and priests in the kingdom of God. We have kingly authority. We have priestly authority. We have to bring back the supernatural gifts to the church in West Malaysia. 
Because West Malaysia, the church is dwindling fast. Ten years ago, the last census, you were left with only 3% of the population of West Malaysia were Christians. The Buddhists and the Taoists are 20 over a percent. The Hindus double us. There's something wrong in this kingdom. Complacency has steps has come in. Inward looking churches. No more the harvest field. The harvest field is too far for us to go out to reach out to the lost. Jesus says, Go. And we are the goers for the Lord. Revival fire wants to bring revival to Christian hearts, Christian families, and to the church of Jesus Christ here in West Malaysia. We will not retreat. We will hold our ground as the army of the Holy God, El Shaddai. Amen. Friends, I've shared with you so much tonight of my personal testimony. You know how real it is. But the miracles do not stop for my family. The revival continues. The family is fervent for the Lord. There are now 24 of us, or 23 of us in the family. Grandparents, sons, their wives, and their children. Three generations that we're talking about. All are Christians. And there's a revival in the family. The miracles never stopped. It continues up to today. And I know, and you all should know if you do not know, this is the time that Christians, all Christians, must draw closer to the Lord. You know, I always give thanks like Tiara sang just now, Mabel sang just now. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Draw close to them. Draw close. Pray in English. Pray in Mandarin. Whatever language you, that you prefer, you pray. And then you begin to move into tongues. And as you pray in tongues, like you did last night, as you pray in tongues, something clicks in the supernatural. And then a quietness falls on you. A stillness falls on you. That is a blessed position. You have entered the veil that has been split open to the Holy of Holies. You come into the Holy of Holies and you have a deep fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's that time you ask. And I always say, Father, thank you. You always hear my voice. You hear my pleas, my requests. I was burdened recently. At my age, having to lead with others, the revival fire movement, it's not easy. I felt the weight. I felt the weight. Not everybody has the same mindset within the organization. Double-mindedness is there. People don't seem to be compelled by the crisis in the church. And I was just in the early hours of the morning just praying, heavy. And then the Lord said to me, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wow! A peace just descended upon me. And a restfulness came upon me. I am not the one carrying the burden. He carries the burden. I just make myself available. Hallelujah! What a revelation! Peace settle upon me. I'm not the one who is ultimately responsible. He is ultimately responsible. How beautiful is our Lord. Thank you, Father. You always hear my prayers. I can tell you so much testimonies. Wonderful testimonies. How the Lord came to my house. The Lord came to my house in the year 2005. Let me tell you very quickly what happened. Ming had still had a thyroid problem. And she was barren. She could not bear a child. 2004, after I was delivered, the whole family went to Jerusalem to thank the Lord in the place where he first trod on this earth and where he would rule for a thousand years on the earth. And then there will be a new heaven and a new earth after the thousand year reign. Let me tell you, so much wonderful things, so much things I cannot even share with you. Get real with God, my friends. Get real with Him. Christianity was never meant to be a religion. It was meant to be a relationship with, between you and the living God. And the amazing thing is this living God. In all the galaxies in the skies, all the universes in the skies, 2,000 galaxies found by astronomers, not astronomers, astro astronomers, yes, astronomers with a giant Hubbard telescope. They cannot find any living organism in any of these billions upon billions upon billions of stars and planets. None here on earth as is stated in Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Only here, my friend. You are here for a little while only. But your spirit goes on forever, eternity, either to hell or to heaven. How does salvation come? That you believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. That he died upon the cross. Three days later, he rose from the dead. Through that faith alone, through that declaration alone, you are safe for all eternity. Why? Why is it so simple? Because Christ, the Son of God, came as a man to die upon that cross, the cruel cross. You know the word excruciating pain? What is excruciating? Means from the cross. He suffered. The suffering servant prophesied by Isaiah 53. He died for you and for me. And that's where the miracles come. That's where the signs and wonders come. So that men may believe. You who were created for this world. A little speck of dust. What are you then? You are less than a speck, my friend. We are all less than a speck. Do not be proud and turn away from God. 
There is no other beings in the entire 2,000 galaxies. Only here. They don't even have an amoeba. We have everything. The flora and the fauna that God created for us. The Garden of Eden that is coming back again according to Revelation. You understand? We are kings. We are priests of him who is the king of kings and lord of lords. Who are the kings that he's kings of? He's king of you and I. We are the kings. You are Christians. Value that, my friends. You are Christians. You are the only living entity in the entire 2,000 galaxies and the billions and trillions of worlds and stars out there means something. Because God wants you to be a member of his family. You will be a member of the kingly royal family of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Value it, my friend. If we do not value it and lose it, if we do not help to expand his kingdom, the church in West Malaysia will die. You know that? Why? Because it became too complacent. It's a very hard message. I've offended many church leaders because of this. But that message must be sent. Every day, one day, all of us will stand before the judgment throne of Christ. And they will ask, the Lord will ask, were you a witness for me upon the earth? You don't have to be a great evangelist. Just be a witness. Witness to your family. Witness to your friends, your colleagues. People, that's all that God asks you to do. We are going to pray for you all now. Can I ask Brother Tommy to come up? Brother Frank to come up? Uh, Samuel Tan just went to the loo. He, he seeks to release himself, but he'll be called back. <laughs> come forward, Frankie. Who else want to come forward to help Sebastian? Come forward. They're going to pray for you all. Are your ushers ready? And your counselors ready? Right. We need some ushers and body catches and so on. Just to stand by, okay? Sam, Sam. Uh, uh, Tommy, have you told them? I've told him what to do and he will inform you. Okay, we have one missing. Sam. Let me, uh, say, Samuel. Some, let me say something. Huh? Let me say something. Just, just now when uh, Dato Chua was preaching, Pastor Felix came and, and told me that there was someone manifesting while he was preaching. And uh, there was a, a young lady that was manifesting and has she been prayed for? If she has not been prayed for, and maybe ask her to... Huh? She has been delivered. Amen. So the team Amen. has delivered. Amen. So while he was preaching, someone was Amen. already manifesting, okay? Hallelujah. Yes. But yes. tonight is for you. All right. You want to be so. prayed for. You want God to touch you. There's a team here. These are all ministers of God. They are oh, pastors and leaders. So this I, I want to know, um, are there any non-Christians here? Okay. Can you just raise your hands? We want to pray for you. Where? Come, sister. Come, sister. Welcome to the family of God. Anybody else? Anybody else who's not a Christian? With a friend who brought her, please ask her to come, or him or her stand, to come stand, forward. Stand this. He's sitting here, okay. So those who want to come for prayer, just come and stand in the line, okay?
the rest all come to the front. Social distancing, come to the front. <laughs>